today we're going to start talking about trigonometry. And the first thing we're going to be doing, this is chapter 4.5 in our textbook. The first thing we're going to be doing is uh, graphing sine and cosine curves, or sketching them. Sine and cosine functions. You did this last year. The ones that we're going to do this year are a little bit more complicated, and you won't be able to use a graphing calculator when you graph these. The general function of a sine, or the general form of a sine function is y is equal to a times the sine of bx minus c plus d. a, b, c, and d are numbers, and what they mean is, you probably remember from last year, the absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, and the amplitude is half the height of the curve from the lowest to the to the um, highest point. Half of the height is the amplitude. The value of b is called the frequency. Frequency means how many full cycles of a sine curve are there between 0 and 2 pi. And remember, 2 pi is at 360 degrees. All of the um, work we're going to be doing with trig will be in radians, so they'll, we'll be talking in terms of pi, usually. Um, C over B is equal to the phase shift. A phase shift is a horizontal shift. and D is equal to the vertical shift. Associated with frequency is the period of the graph. The period of the graph is the horizontal distance it takes to complete one full cycle. And the period can be um, evaluated if you know B. The period of a, of a sine and cosine curve is equal to 2 pi divided by whatever the B value is. Actually, you should say the absolute value of B, although we'll probably never get a negative B in our formula, in our function. So period is 2 pi divided by B. And if you know the period of a function, you can calculate B and b is equal to 2 pi over the period. So those are two little equations that you should know when you're graphing sine, sine curves. Let me remind you of what a sine curve looks like. A sine curve has a midline. I call this the midline. And if this has been vertically shifted, usually the midline is the x-axis. But if there's a vertical shift, the mid midline is y is equal to d, whatever the value of the vertical shift is. There are five major points in a sine curve. I, I put the first and last point in at first, and then I divide it up equally, smack dab in the middle, halfway. And then halfway between these two points is the maximum point on the sine curve. So I just go up and create a hill for the first half. And then I create the little valley for the second half. So what I like to see in each cycle of a sine curve, this is one cycle. There are five major points and they have to be indicated. So we have a midline, a maximum, a midline, a minimum, and then a mid midline. So keep that in mind when we're going to be uh, graphing these things. One full cycle of a cosine curve, again, y equals d 
is the midline. Oh, I didn't even write that down. Y equals D is the midline. That's just the middle of the curve. So Y equals D being the midline, you divide it up in half and then you divide it in half again. And a cosine curve starts up at the maximum point. It goes to the midline in the first quartile, then it hits the minimum point, then it goes through the midline again, and then it hits the maximum at the end. And it kind of curves down like this. It's a concave down curve, and then it goes concave up, and then another concave up, and then a concave down. This is one cycle of a cosine curve. And again, there are five major points. And the five major points are the max, the midline, the min, the midline, and the max again. If we have a horizontal shift in our sine and cosine curve, we have to calculate the left and the right end point. Usually, if something hasn't been shifted horizontally or vertically, usually or what we can do is we can call this the y-axis. This is with no shift. Here's the y-axis. And then the x-axis is usually the midline. That's with no shift. But when you start shifting things horizontally, what we have to do is we have to calculate the starting point and then the ending point. And then we have to calculate the halfway points between the start and the end and then the halfway points between these two middle points. So we'll just draw our x and y axes in for the cosine curve. If this has not been shifted, then this is our y axis, and this down here is our x axis. As far as the x values go, if this has not been shift, if this has not been shrunk or stretched by a value of b, which is uh, the frequency. If B is equal to 1, then the major points on our sine curve, I'm sure you remember from last year, are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And if this has an amplitude equal to 1, then the, the sine curve goes up to 1 on the y-axis and down to negative 1 is the minimum point. And we'll just draw those same values in our cosine curve. It goes up to 1, goes down to negative 1, and then the points on the x-axis are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So that's just a standard curve. This is y is equal to the cosine of x. a is 1, b is 1, c is 0, and d is 0. And up here, this is just y is equal to the sine of x. Again, a is 1, b is 1, c and d are both 0 because it hasn't been shifted at all. So we'll get, we'll get into a couple examples of some um, shifted and stretched sine and cosine curve. This is example of shifted and stretch, stretch sine and cosine curves, or sine and cosine functions. So let's say we have y is equal to 2 times the sine of x minus pi over 2 plus 1. What we have is an amplitude equal to 2, our frequency is equal to 1. Our shift has been pi over 2 to the right and up 1.
And what we're going to do is pause for a moment and pick it up in a minute. So I've drawn my um, I've drawn my midline for my uh, graph that I put down or my function two sine x minus pi over two plus one. This is the midline. So the midline's equation is y is equal to one because it's been shifted up one. What I want to do is I want to put the five major points so I can do one full cycle of this sine curve. So I put my two endpoints. The first endpoint, since this is a shift to the right of pi over 2, I'm going to determine my x values on this y equals 1 line. So it's shifted to the right, so my first x value is pi over 2. My y-axis would be something like right there. The period of this um, of this curve, because the frequency is 1 and the period is 2 pi over the frequency, the period is equal to 2 pi, which means the distance between the left and the right endpoint is 2 pi. So if I added 2 pi to pi over 2, I'm going to get the x value of this point over here. So pi over 2 plus 2 pi is 5 pi over 2. So this right here, pi over 2 plus the period, which is pi over 2 plus 2 pi. This is divided in half to get my middle point. And to get this middle point, it's the average between these two points right here. So this x value right here is pi over 2 plus 5 pi over 2, which is 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi. And if you take half of that, this would be 3 pi over 2. And what is this is, is this is the average of the left and right endpoints, which is pi over 2 plus 5 pi over 2, all divided by 2. That's an average. You can write that down in your notes if you need to. The next point I'm going to get is I'm going to get the x value of this midpoint right here, halfway between these two points. So I'm adding them up and dividing by 2 to get the average. Pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2. 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. And half of 2 pi is 1 pi. So this point right here, the average between these two is just 1 pi. And then I'm going to get this midpoint here between the middle and the end point. So I'm adding these two and dividing by 2. 3 pi over 2 plus 5 pi over 2 is 8 pi over 2, which is 4 pi. And 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. So there are the x values of all of my major points on the, the cycle of the sine curve. The next thing I want to do is I want to get the maximum and the minimum y values for this. Well, this has an amplitude of 2. So from this midline, there's going to be a distance of 2 between the maximum and the midline. And there's also going to be a distance of 2 between the midline and the minimum points. So I could kind of dot this if I wanted to. And this is going to be where the function maxes out. And down here is where the, the function is going to be the minimum point. My sine curve starts at the midline, goes to the max, goes through the x-axis, halfway in between the endpoints, goes down and hit the minim hits the minimum point down here, and then comes up. Okay, so this is the y equals 1 line. This is not the y-axis. This is y equals 1. This maximum point right here is y equals 3 because 1 plus 2 is 3. So this particular point on this sine curve has an x value of pi and a y value of 3. This point right here has an x value of pi over 2 and a y value of 1. This point has an x value of 3 pi over 2 and a y value of 1. This minimum point on a sine curve 
has an x value of 2 pi and a y value of negative 1 because 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then over here where the sine curve ends up, it has an x value of 5 pi over 2 and the y value of 1. Now if we want to just sketch the x-axis in here, we could, maybe I'll do this in red, here's the y-axis here, and the x-axis is going to go about right here, is the x-axis. So if you can see these in red, here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. This is our midline, y equals 1, and then we have it maxing and minning, minimum down here with the five major points. So we'll be practicing a lot of these sine and cosine curves in class with some amplitudes. And um, the tougher ones is what are when you get a frequency that's not equal to 1 and a horizontal shift at the same time. They get very tricky as far as figuring out where the starting and the end or the starting point begins actually in the ending point with the period. So we'll just get lots of practice, but that's an introduction to graphing a sine curve with an amplitude, a horizontal shift, and a vertical shift. And the amplitude, oh by the way, the amplitude is a vertical stretch. The frequency would be a vertical shrinker, would be the horizontal shrinker stretch.